Yo, 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 welcome back to more Disco Elysium. It was pretty climactic at the end of the last episode. Very climactic indeed. Now my goal is to return to Martinez. Should be good. Should I swig something else? Should I take some more drugs? My character is totally sober. I feel like I should take something. Should I do more vodka? Or speed? I don't want to mess with my health because my health was taking a beating the last episode, so I think that I will do this. Yeah, I'll make sure I got yeah, I got the right gun here. Again, you gotta do this twice. Alright, let me take a swig. Nice. And then, yeah, let me put the gun back on. I love the, the dual wielding guns. It's pretty nice. And let me switch around. Let me put my main gun on my right hand. Let's get out of here. Time for what? Oh, you will see. It feels like the tie is rubbing itself against your chest like a cat in heat. Faster, spirits! The blue medicinal spirits! Grab the bottle and uncork it! It is time to unleash the other world! Oh my god, I've been waiting for this quest or a task. I love the horrific necktie. I know I said that Egghead is one of my favorite characters in the game, but I gotta give it to the necktie. My one... True leader. Let me go slowly uncork the blue medicinal spirits. No questions asked. I follow the Tai's commands to a T. The bottle opens with a silent, mysterious hiss. The fumes rising from its mouth are as crisp as the northern winds. Howling somewhere, lashing the boardwalk with brine and rain. An ancient warmth crawls under your skin. Now, Bratan, take me off. Oh, no. I didn't want to take the necktie off. Again, I followed the command. I don't ask questions of the necktie. Your fingers manage to undo the oily knot, and the necktie slides off. It looks so frail sitting there in your hand, weighing almost nothing. Now what? Now! Put me in the bottle! Put the necktie in the bottle. As the necktie slides into the purifying liquid, large stains of grease rise off from it and float to the surface. There, they quickly dissolve and disappear completely. Absolutely wretched. Disgusting. I love it. Everything about this is perfect. Cleansed by the blue spirit fire of 98.7% pure alcohol. The fabric looks almost new again. No longer like a disgusting worm of the lower intestine, but like a colorful and deadly poisonous reef snake of the Insulindian Ocean. So what next? The necktie floats in the bluish liquid with almost unearthly grace. It's like an organic sample brought back from a distant star system inhabited by sentient neckwear. Necktie? There is silence. No. I'm going to cork the bottle and put the it away. The lieutenant has been observing you quietly all this time. So I got a spirit bomb. Interesting. He's struggling to keep silent, but finally seems to give up. I've got to ask, what are you doing? As always, lie. Okay, Kim. I don't want to tell anyone, but my necktie has been talking to me lately. Of course it has. It started when I woke up in the whirling in rags. It's been talking to me ever since. And what has the necktie been telling you, if I may ask? It mostly urges me to party harder. Wonderful. Very useful. He doesn't actually believe it's wonderful. Okay, so why did you put it in the bottom? Because it told me to. Right, okay. Anyway, I'm glad you told me your necktie has been speaking to you. That must not have been easy. For a second it looks like he's about to add something. We're all under stress. This is turning into a great big mess. I'm not judging. Just keep it together. Let's go. He turns away, his gaze fixed on the road ahead. Let's see what we got here. 
Equip this when times are most dire. Huh. Oh, you know what? It's called a spirit bomb. And it absolutely 100% looks like a Molotov cocktail. Wow. Okay. We can kind of guess where this is going. Your spirit guides at a party scene. The horrific necktie is floating serenely in the blue medicinal spirit. As it is still 98.7% alcohol, this necktie cocktail is extremely flammable and should be kept away from open flames. I'm equipping this. Times are dire. Yeah, it's, it's a little Molotov cocktail. The horrific necktie is sacrificing itself to become a bomb that's probably going to save me. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know. Let's go. Let's run back to the Whirling In Rags. Actually, it's this way. Getting a little lost here in this tunnel network. Oh, something here. You should take out your flashlight. Alright, alright. Hold on, hold on. Put that there. And now I will put my thing here again. Good. So I need to go to the Whirling In Rags. Why don't I head on over to the church? That way I can quick teleport there. Okay. Oh, I can't... I can't teleport. I can't teleport. That's weird. See, it makes me see... Makes me feel like there's a programmed something. Like, once I'm running up to the Whirling in, Does that make sense? Like, if I can't teleport there... I must trigger something on my path to it. And the game is probably not giving me a chance to uh, escape that. Or maybe I'm just, like, trying too hard to read into what's going on here. Maybe I should just let the surprise take me instead of trying to figure things out. You run all the way back, then. It certainly feels like something's going to happen, mainly because of the illusions from my horrific necktie. If the tie said it's time, then it's time, you know? There's no way around it. Wait a minute, could I come here before? Oh yeah, I did come here. You just can't go past. Ah, the streets of Martinez, Rue St. Ghislaine. Stop. Just up ahead. Danger. See, I knew it. You are prepared. Don't put away your friend, your weapon. It is glowing in your hand, ready to serve. Raindrops slip down the oily fabric of the tail end of your necktie turned fuse. Kim, there's danger. Up ahead. Yes, I hear commotion. Let's go. He cups his ears. I'm ready to do this. Good. Be ready to take damage. Be ready to take damage? Oh no. I'm pretty full up here. Should I? Well, worst case scenario, I can always put more points into endurance as whatever is happening unfolds. Okay, let's go, guys. I'm all out of shit to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. There's a feverish gleam in his eyes. Wow, so we got, I guess, the other two mercenaries. And then we got Titus. The lawyer girl. We got the rest of the Hardy Boys. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. Alright? Titus remains calm, and Gart is observing from the balcony. Shut up! Not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. 
Okay, so this was the the scab leader. Now he's out of his disguise, I guess. There's something very wrong with him. He's dangerous. Shh. The lieutenant raises his left hand. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Her tone is frighteningly emotionless. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Peaceful. It sounds like the armored figure is weeping. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's a third one. How did we miss something like this? The lieutenant points to the helmeted figure. I didn't see them on the screen. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. He puts his hand on his holster. We're out of time. This is the mercenary tribunal. The big one is the mercenary at the gates. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. He nods. A sound strategy. He's the leader. Um, dang, what should I do? Should I walk away for now or maybe get the element of surprise, you know? I'm really struggling with this decision here. I feel like it's an important one. I feel like we should remain hidden and use the element of surprise. Let's walk away for now. No, we have to step in. This is not going to end well if we don't. Okay, well that makes my decision easier. Stop! This is the police. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He licks his lips, waving his gun to the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backward. I think he's calmed down a bit. No, he didn't. He's about to open fire. Hmm. No, he's calming down. I can talk to him. You can't think that way now. This is serious. Pig fuck! The voice from beneath the helmet interrupts your thoughts. You only make out the last word. I'm trying to find the helmeted guy. I don't see him anywhere here. Am I blind? Where's the helmeted guy? Easy now. No one needs to die here today. Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the blue medicinal spirit in your hand seems to have a pulsating glow. It feels enticing somehow. All right, end game. Light me on fire and throw me in his face. Oh my god, this is it. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Wait, it's a good thing you have an anthropomorphic petrol bomb. It really is. But you have to soften him up first. Present an argument. Even if it comes to a fight, it's a good idea to get under his skin first. No, please. Peace. It has worked this far. Start with the first idea you have, 
move down from that. Okay, so lots of options here. I got a rhetoric to think of an argument. I got a suggestion to talk about the hangman. And then, oh no! The spirit bomb is only 17%. It's a hand-eye coordination check. I'm definitely going to put points into that. I'm going to put two full points into it. Now we're at 42 on that. Okay. Who is that? Pointed a man. I didn't know you had a third guy. I still don't see him. Oh, right here. This guy. He's like blending in. Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer, Hoan Cloven. He doesn't talk much. The armored woman smiles, a vicious smile. All of you cunts inside out. What was that, Rude? Rip you open. Perhaps it's for the best. Him not talking too much. I got another skill point, but I've I've maxed out the hand-eye coordination. Okay. That's okay then. <laughs> The killer. The gunner. The raddest. The killer. He gestures towards himself as the gunner. He nods towards the woman as the raddest, and he points to the figure clad entirely in ceramic plate as the killer. What do you think he does? There, on the rim of Owen Clerven's helmet, you count little stick figures. 19, 20, 21. He kills? Smart loincloth. He fucks natives up. Soldier of the apocalypse style. Easy. Easy now. Listen, they didn't do it. Yeah? Who did then? Not gonna point. We just need a little more time to figure this out. Time. You had time to fuck around in that church. To run errands for your union chief. I saw you. Time is up, Lord Claude. Give me a name. Now! It was someone else. Someone who's not here. How fucking convenient. He gives a drunken stare, then puts his hand on the gun. His fingers are twitching. That's a draw reflex. He's about to draw. Oh, man. He was shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. You think I'm fucking stupid, cop? What if I just shot one of your pals here, right now, huh? There's a dangerous gleam in his eye. How about the kid? Tell me, the magic fucking sniper, one more time. He points his gun at Elizabeth. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who... She raises both hands. He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. Oh no. 58%. Think. Think! Why doesn't he believe me? Can I put a point into logic? I have three points. Let me put one point here. So that went up to 72. That, that was a pretty good chunk. The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him. All together. Titus said, we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud, in a public place. Listen, he was shot. He wasn't hanged. Listen to me. You're lying. DePaul heard it. He doesn't move the weapon. You heard wrong. She and his men have been helping us find the shooter. The hanging was only a cover-up. Listen. Oh no! He pulls the trigger. A plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle of his gun. Who's down? Nobody's down. He must have missed. The shot rings in your ears. A low, tinny ring. Then, the Hardy Boys yell something. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flown over her head, crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. I missed. The man looks at his revolver and smiles. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. The radio operator looks at him. That doesn't sound good. 
You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. What topic? Shots have been fired. Act before it's too late. This was a close call. So the spear bomb is still 72%. Let me think of an argument. Let me do this rhetoric check. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Krenner would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. Really, none of this looks like it's going to do anything but piss him off. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. Let's go with... You were called Downell once. What happened? What always happens when you get good at your job? That name meant night raids. Fucking extrajudicial monkey time burned villages. Shit that sounds bad on the radio. The same thing happened when we were called whatever the fuck it was. Probably won't be called Cronell for much longer either. He looks around. Not after this shit. Okay, it's not much. But he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. Nice. Now fire. Fuck them up. Do it. The muscles on your back tense up. This has gone up to 58%. Let me talk about the hangman. Dangerous. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Who are you? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner, reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. He points at the whirling in rags. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. Click, click, click. A realization comes to you like a picture puzzle coming together. His name is Raoul Cortenar. The dead man's name is Elise Cortenar. He's brothers with the deceased. No, probably foster brothers. Elise was put into a foster home, remember? For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer, you're all sentenced to death by lead. Cortenar, I know that name. He sways from left to right, inspecting you. Raoul and Ellis Cortenar. Look him in the eye. I'm sorry about your brother, Raoul. He wasn't my fucking brother. We just grew up on the same farm and got beat in a place by the same sick fuck. Beaten by a foster parent or someone on the farm. And then went to the same military academy. And the same unit. And the same war. Same fucking mud hut town, too. He looks around, then wipes his face with his armored glove. Okay, good. His parents left him in a fucking leaf compactor. Who? Laylee? Yes, when he was small, just an infant. We researched him. We contacted the ICP and looked at his birth records. What was in there? And other things. They fucking put Laylee in a leaf compactor. And now these cunts finish the job. He waves at the gang huddled by the doors. There's real anguish in his voice. A drunken sadness suddenly engulfs him memories. That's not good. He might do something rash. It's a mind fuck, Corti. He wasn't put in a leaf compactor. They're making it up to fuck with us. Major. Permission to. Open fire. We can't have that. Interfere now. Listen, you're Lely. Everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. Fuck do you mean? Talker. We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic, a nice guy to be around. Yeah, he liked to chat up the natives, share leaflets, squeeze a bit of kipped ass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. He points toward the yard. If Lely was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me, I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. This one isn't used to being suited this long. 
she's uncomfortable, we'll open fire just to hurry things along. Banaital 41. That really happened, didn't it? Our colonel did what he had to do. It was either one cunt or a hundred of them. Rude here. He points to him. In your ship pipes, run, right, little fucker. He likes to fire mortars at random coordinates. Wipe out mud huts like that. When he gets bored, Lady knew how to command. He was a good commander. I can see you miss him. Oh, yeah. You would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. That didn't happen. Because hey, see, Bill and Kipty the Kipped here. He points to Titus and Eugene. Fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. And you fucks did nothing. He points at you. Listen, man. We told you we... Told us what? What did you say? Who said that? Tattoo fuck! You'll die first! He had blue eyes, didn't he? Your brother. Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. He smiles, pulling his face in a strange way. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Your brother did not deserve to go out like that, I promise. I will find his killer. Find his killer? Cop, his killer stands right there, shitting his pants, and you're standing in the way, protecting them. He waves at the men behind you. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. Today. He stares at you, eyes pink from the alcohol. Fingers tapping the pistol. Big talk, but that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. So I got this up to 83%. I kind of want to go through the other options, but the thing is, I'm really scared that if I don't do this quickly, I'll lose the opportunity to do it. And if I lose the opportunity to throw the horrific necktie in a blaze of glory like was intended from the very beginning of the game, when I first picked it up off the ceiling fan blade, I'll never forgive myself. But I don't think that's gonna happen. I'm gonna go through these options. You're all drunk, look at yourselves. Yes. So what? Yeah, so what? You should be drunk too. Or, like, drunker. You don't want to die sober, do you? I'm drunk too, let's dance, baby. All right, let's do this. Smear your shit all over this fucking dung field. That didn't work at all. He's more focused now. Okay. Well, at least it didn't give me a minus on this. The Wild Pines rep does not approve of this. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> Wild Pines is not going to forgive you massacring a bunch of innocent people. The man stares at you with bloodshot eyes, a bull ready to charge. He's not listening, but looking for an opening. Now is not a good time to strike. He's looking right at your hands. Do something else. Get him distracted. She's going to be mad when she hears about this. She's fucking gone! She fucking sailed off. You're alone. The shout echoes back from the whirling windows. Stay cool! Don't do anything stupid! Titus shouts to his men in the background. The company bitch is gone. What the fuck are we still doing in this shithole? He looks around, tired suddenly, sad even. Guys, I, um, I just get in the way. I don't even have a gun. The little guy breaks formation. Hold your ground. Any more of you run, i shoot you myself. We're doing this together. He literally did run out. They're afraid, all of them. Trembling reeds in the wind. They'll run. Scatter soon, one by one. No, the rest will stay. They will hold their ground, even if it means dying here with you. Where's Glossier? She can explain this. Who the fuck is that? Glossier, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! The manager calls down from the balcony. Guards, what the hell are you doing here? What am I doing? My fucking establishment is under fire! 
You know how much windows cost? He points to the armored figures. What do you mean she left? She left. Her room's cleaned out. Right before these assholes showed up. We should have arrested her. The lieutenant whispers, his eyes still on the armed mercenaries. You can feel how upset he is with himself. Just for a second. Then the fear takes over and he's back in the moment. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! The veins on the man's neck expand as he yells. She's gone. Forget about it now. Concentrate on this. It's time, guys. I have never wanted to pass a, a check so bad. There was the one where I was trying to convince the lieutenant to dance. I really wanted that one. Pretty bad. But this one takes the cake. There's a 17% chance I don't get it. I will be devastated. Light the spirit bomb and launch it at him. We did it. Goodbye, horrific necktie. With a crash of shattering glass and a terrible roar, the fire draws in oxygen. The bomb hits the mercenary in the chest, swallowing him in flames as he staggers backward. My horrific necktie, my friend, my only true companion in this game, the one who truly understood me. Goodbye, sir. You have fulfilled your duty, and you've saved everybody. The best tie that ever was. In the fiery inferno, you see your tie coiling around the man's neck. It is no longer horrific, but beautiful and pure. It always was. It was always beautiful and pure. I only ever wanted you to have fun, Harry. It calls out to you one last time. Wait, I didn't even know your name. My name, should you know it, is Jobson A.S. Men's Fashion Model Colorful Tie, catalog number J327. I know so little about you. How did we meet? One day a sad man walked into a clothing store. He looked really down, like he hadn't had fun in years. He needed someone to show him how to rock and roll again. Jupes and A.S. catalog number J327 shone on the tie rack, trying to get his attention. The sad man picked it up and put it on. He looked at himself in the mirror, didn't smile. I'm young again. And from that moment on, we rode together. The rest of your clothes were still normal back then, but we took care of that soon enough. Did we have any fun? Truthfully, not a lot. I did everything a multi-pattern necktie can do to help a man. I mean, I tried to get you to do all the fun things. Drink beer, drink wine, drink cider. Go to parties with young people around and drink beer and cider. Do drugs too, so you don't fall asleep. You had some fun, but not enough to heal you. What's wrong with me? Your heart is broken, Bratushka, and it cannot be mended. Believe me, I've tried. Am I going to stay like this forever? No, you're going to be mowed down by gunfire from the two remaining marks. So no. Not forever. Who broke my heart? You both did, Ratan. Deep down, you know it was both of you. No, no. It was her, mostly. Don't lie to him, Nicktie. What's going on with that guy? This guy? Well, his face has cracked open into a scream of terror. It looks like he's performing some sort of a shamanistic dance that requires you to be on fire. Yeah. His body contorts in a very disturbing manner. There's no mincing words with this one. He's dying a horrible, painful death as you're talking to your tie in your head. Smells like a steak on the grill, the burning flesh in your nostrils. May he find peace by his stepbrother. It's good to see you still have capacity for compassion, my friend. Deep down, you are a good man. That was a beautiful story from the necktie about how we met, how we had a great life together with lots of fun but not enough fun, how he tried to mend my broken heart but was unable to do so. Goodbye, necktie. See you on the other side. The necktie disintegrates into the molten heat, its last remaining embers letting out a pop and a crack that sounds like... Harry, for God's sake! Watch out! Oh. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. 
His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. Oh man, I have a reaction speed check here. You know what I forgot to do? Once I put the tie in the bottle, I should have equipped another one of my ties. Kim, where's Kim? From the corner of your eye, you see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at Rude. He's trying to find a straight line of sight before the rifleman can take you out. In the background, the leader is still on fire. It's not easy. He has 0 0.6 seconds to do so. He won't make it. You're on your own. Oh man, let me blink and think. You steer down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it. His eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. I wonder if it was him who shot the mercenary because his rifle might match the description of the actual gun that was used. Absolute destruction. Is there anything, anything, we could use to protect this frail body. That gun will tear us to pieces. He's drunk. Drunk fighters overcorrect. Move right, he aims further right. Get him to overshoot. Just dodge the first shot, and the second will be easier. Drunks are so, quick to anger and make mistakes. So we're at 92%. Let me take a look. Yeah, you can't open the inventory. Reaction speed. Oh, I'm already maxed out on reaction speed, so I can't even level it up if I wanted to. So we're gonna have to take the 92%. Seems important to dodge a bullet, though. I feel like if I fail this one... I don't know what happens. Is the game over? Do I lose a bunch of health? I don't know. Let's dodge the shot. You leap left. A swarm of MPM passes mere millimeters from your side, tearing fabric off your coat. Feels like the lightest of tucks. Joy, I am alive! The man tilts his head, trying to see through the clearing smoke for the next shot. Watch out. To your left. DePaul is about to take a shot too. At Kim. No, not Kim. God, please. The lieutenant says quietly without trembling. He aims. Face pale. He's aiming for the eye slot in Rude's helmet. An extremely difficult shot. Two shots ring at once. One from the lieutenant's pistol, and the other from De Paul's. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. What happened? What happened? Kim, did he hit the rifleman? Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. Good work, Kim. Kim, the ever faithful lieutenant. What a good boy. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. Spectacular Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. He missed the shot at the hangman on the belt buckle holding him up. But he did not miss when it counted. Strong work, Kim. The helmet looks like the face of an ancient god of war, crying blood. It does look pretty grisly. Who screamed? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh no. Lynn. I mean, out of all the people that could have died, I, th I think he was probably one of the most insignificant characters here. I'm sorry, Glenn. You're dying. Your blood is squirting everywhere. I should be a little more respectful. Glenn, no! Not Glenn, how could you? Oh God, watch out. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through the burning meat and the flames. With his face boiling off, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. No. Oh my god. I well, let me look at the burning man in the eye. Maybe that'll improve this because 3% is not happening, you know? The look of vengeance framed by melting skin. This is the last thing he will do on Earth. But he will do it. He will end you. Is this the end of the game? Is this how it all ends? Here it comes. Death. Yep, that is reaction speed. And like I said, I think I'm maxed out on it. Yep, I'm maxed out on reaction speed. I cannot do anything more about this. I literally have to try at a 3%, which I think is only if I roll a double six. Evade the shot. Yeah, oh no, what's gonna happen?
You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. Here it comes. Death. Let me listen through the darkness and pain. The Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire shatters glass. Stop! The cop! Protect the cop! He's down! Let me touch my lower body. Warm blood pools underneath you. It's sticky. And there's so much of it. Oh, I'm screwed. Don't go into shock. Hold on. What parts of me are missing? Most of what's down there. Oh, God. It's all gone. Open your eyes now. You have to see what's happening. No, no. It's just a fear. Even if... Who cares? No one wants you anyway. My God, Inland Empire. Let me try to open my eyes. What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. A silhouette appears, crouching over you. You hear a familiar voice filled with urgency and fear. No one wants to do anything with me. No one wants to party with me. Stay with me. You feel burning hot tears streaming from your eyes. This is a stupid world. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. The lieutenant pushes down on your wound hard. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy and the sounds ever more distant. And the cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When suddenly, you sense something behind him. A slender white shadow towering. Oh, Someone no. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. No. Oh, come on. Don't do this to me. I can't take that. I lost a horrific necktie. I can't lose the lieutenant, too. Not good. Yeah, he's trying to save me here. She's behind him. Oh, please, not like this. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. 83%. Okay. I keep saying I've never wanted to pass a red check more in my life. But I've never wanted to pass a red check more in my life. I will be devastated. 83%. That's pretty good. That's the same one as throwing the bottle. But I've been hitting all my checks. Except for that 3% one just now. But I feel like my lucky streak might be running out. I, I don't know, man. 83%. Come on. Come on, Kim. Save yourself. No, Kim. No, oh. you say. And hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles, and your eyes are full of fear. My heart, dude, when I saw that little green pop up. What a relief. Oh, man. That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. You hear a faint scream. A woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. Okay, at first when I read this, so is Kim, I was like, he died too, but then I realized it's just my my reality fading out, I think. I'm gonna fall into total darkness. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. Will I be a ghost now? Brother. You already were a ghost. Up there, screaming along with all of them. Scaring each other. Haunting each other. I love that. I love this line. This is... This is deep, bro. This is deep. It's the living who are ghosts. The dead are silent. They don't rattle windows or write letters in blood. The living do. Leave them behind. Rest. How crazy would it be 
if I actually do become a ghost and that's how you finish the game, you have to go around as a ghost. That would be crazy. No, let me back into the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Of the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers, thrashing in his wound sleep. He can't go, not before the case is solved. There is a radio in the distance, a radio of the world, plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. We're back, boys. We're back. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. The engine of a caprice Kanema. No, it was him. He is the infernal engine. Can't you see? He never stops. He only gets... Wow. Life gets hard, but we go on. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple from the pain. We're back. This is so good. Is this my room at the Whirly all cleaned up and beautiful? It is. Wow, look how organized it is. It's nothing. You're alive. That's what matters. Kim. Sunrise, Arabellon. The lieutenant says he's in the middle of a freshly cleaned room with a fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered with bruises. The room, it's clean. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. How long have I been out? Two days, in and out. You've been up enough to take Dwamin and curse. And drink water. The piss jacket, Kim. You took it off. Yes. The joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. The close proximity of death must have made the lieutenant contemplate his life choices. He's done with the jacket. Okay, that's kind of interesting because... I tried to get him to wear the jacket, if you remember, from those two hooligans outside his kinema. And he refused to do so, but this dialogue seems to imply that you might have been able to get him to do that. Right? Ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just go to Druamin pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. Druamin? Then it's not that bad. Neither surgical nor organ damage bad. But still, under the counter bad. What did you say, Sunrise? Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary thing. Isn't that written on your... My gun. It's engraved on it. Cops like it. Is it war today? The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. He looks out the window. I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. He unzips his bomber jacket. A pity. Pity? This is the end, and I'm a trumpeteer, Kim. The quicker we get it done, the better. Uh-huh. I see the door I mean is working. What happened? What happened? You threw an improvised petroleum bomb at the Major. A firefight ensued. The tie made me do it. He does not answer, and searches for something in his coat pocket instead. 
Is it the tie? Is it the charred remains of my tie? A smoke, most likely. Is he dead? Very. He died in the hospital. A bloodstained killer. I'm a killer. You're an officer of the RCM. He continues without waiting for a reply. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He missed, or you dodged. I dodged. Then I shot and wounded him while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. Glenn did not survive. There's a pause. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. Titus, Fat Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Ah, oh, man. So Fat Angus and Theo died as well. I like Fat Angus. Oh, man. Eugene? Yes. He's still alive, too. You were bleeding out by then. I think you say that no one wants to party with you. And you warned me. I was able to disarm one of them, the pole, before she got the jump on me. Thank you. I killed her. And that's what happened. The lieutenant takes a cigarette from his coat pocket and lights it. A bitter smell fills the room. So you also killed. He nods. I thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. And they're all dead, all three of the contractors? The pool was the last to die. Everhart had their bodies returned to Connell for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Why? Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... He breathes in the fumes, thinking. Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. I don't know. How many casualties on the Union side? Total? Three. Glenn, Theo, Angus. The fat one. He took a lot of bullets. And Theo, he was just too old for combat. And that's... All. An absolute disaster. Well, let me go with... It's a total shit show, Kim. Yes, officer. Seven people are dead. It's not a success. Wait a minute. This says six people are dead, but the narration said seven. It's kind of weird. So it was Theo, Angus... Theo, Angus, and who's the other one? Glenn. Yeah, Glenn, Theo, Angus. Glenn was the first one. And I kept saying how unmemorable of a character he was, so it's kind of funny that I forgot his name and had to go back up. But yeah, Glenn, Theo, Angus, and then the three mercs. So it's six, not seven. Well, I guess Ruby. Ruby could count as one. So you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that since I was unable to talk Ruby down from blowing her own brains out, the narration gets triggered to say seven instead of six. Does that make sense? I think I'm thinking way too much about the discrepancy between this word and the narration, but anyway. Plus one. Ruby. There you go. There you go. So this is 6 plus 1, 7, which triggers the narration to have had said 7. But what's done is done. The violence is cordoned off. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized. Yet. He rubs his swollen chin. And we are still alive. Both of us. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. His smoking. His hunched back. You have it worse, but he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. How bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your tie. The outer side, thankfully, no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrome. Can I walk? We will see. If it's possible, then by pure willpower alone, you are going to have to become... A psycho locomotor. I'm a psycho locomotor. Good. You'll need to be. Whatever that is. Has anyone from my station been in to see me? No. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vicmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead. Harbor cranes rise to the sky. 
Back to that shithole, he says. They don't care about me at all. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Odd. You haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they're worried about you. That means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. If they were, wouldn't they be here? If they're so worried about me, where are they? I don't know. If not my station, then who treated me? I did. I didn't know you could do that. It's part of a detective's task chain. You can do it too. Actually, you can. You can even remove a fractured bullet, it seems. Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. I try to not move too much. He rubs his chin. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming, stupid of me. Okay. Walk, Braton, walk. Let the legs be healed. Easy now. The lieutenant turns double again before your eyes, an orange hue of pain. You can take it. Just don't lean on that leg of yours too heavily. How are you? My disco days are done. Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant Ephrater. What happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. Good, because I totally do. Do you? Because we can't talk to Evrard. The harbor's in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. Joyce has left too, thanks to our meddling. You don't think it was a good idea? I don't know what to think. It might not have been a bad idea. There is a pin somewhere in the machine. Something is keeping Connell from sending in a death squad. He looks out the window. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Wait, you checked? She's really... God confirmed she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. Dang it, that was a decision I had to make way back in the day, many episodes ago, whether to arrest Classy or not. And I decided to investigate further before doing something so drastic. But at the same time, I think I did comment that it was weird that she was a suspect and I just let her be by herself without any escort or anything. She could leave whenever she wanted and that's exactly what she did. And now with more information, it seems like she was involved to some extent. Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hanged man? I don't know. I think the theory you presented, it's someone else outside our circle of suspects, was right. It better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. His voice is calm, matter-of-factly. The fucking Maybells, Kim. The flowers. What? They were on the roof. I did not... I did not catch them, fucking butterfingers. Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to catch everything. He's wrong. No, Kim, every piece of garbage in the city is connected to the case. Okay. He concedes, clearly not meaning it. This is because I'm a La Puta Madre's peon, isn't it? Don't be narcissistic. Have the cops in Revachol West are his peonies. Even if you are, it is not a decisive factor in this case. That does make some sense. What about the hole in the... Ouch. Wall. Someone was checking her out. I don't know. That's been there for years. The goddamn footprints. Yes. God cursed the footprints. Not solving the case for us. Au diable. There's still a... 28% possibility the shot came from a distance. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? A light nod through some pain. See? There's that. You can do ballistics. An antique bullet from a Belmagrav 4.46 millimeters. How hard can it be to find one? How hard can it be? It's extremely easy. There are thousands lying around. We found one. All completely unusable. It's precisely how easy it is to find one that makes the bullet useless. There are all these old bunkers and weapon caches, revolutionary era. 
We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. But they seemed so mysterious. I can't believe they're fucking useless. No need to be melodramatic. Something is creeping around out there. I sense it. What is? Something. Something. He repeats. It does not sound like he's enthused about this. Something. You know what I think about? Solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is super easy. Really? Because to me, it seems solving crimes is hard. He sounds surprisingly weary. That concussion must be making him dizzy. You're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? A gust of wind blows in from the bay. The dr aluminium box around you vibrates imperceptibly. A familiar cold, a red thread on the roof upstairs. Taut, plucked like a string by the gust. We should check Miss Aranya Disco Dancer's room, upstairs. Why not? He extinguishes the cigarette on the sole of his boot. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. Wow. Here we are, boys. That was one hell of an episode. And I'm so happy the game is not over. At multiple points, I thought, alright, it's the end of the game. I've enjoyed it. It's been so much fun. But I get to play more. That's the most exciting thing about all this. That horrific necktie conclusion was so perfect. I love it. Everything about this game is coming together and it's making me joyful. What an adventure it's been and it looks like we still have more adventure ahead. So if you're enjoying as much as I am, be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for stopping by the Renaissance Gaming Monastery. I hope you join our community on Discord and Twitter. These videos are produced with a lot of hard work and love. If you think they're worth a dollar, I'd be grateful for your contribution. You can send a thanks donation or become a member on YouTube. You can also support through PayPal, Patreon, or even with cryptocurrency. All links are in the description. See you on the next video.